apartment in New York was like quite a sinner for a lot of Baba lovers. They'd be dropping in all the time. So, um, that, and then they, they moved to Myrtle Beach for a while. And, uh, oh, while we, Adele was in New York, they started a center in New York. She liked to tell a story about how Buckmaster Fuller bought an apartment building, a building. And he said anyone could have free rent if they were doing some, um, good work. And so they actually got a Baba Center there and they established a little Baba Center in New York. And it wasn't in the best neighborhood, but you know, she did a lot of work with establishing and working with centers too. That seemed to be part of the work she did. Anyway, after her divorce with George, uh, George McEwen, she went out to LA and became part of, uh, to join Phillips out there in the LA group. And she became a very, uh, dynamic part of the LA Baba group. She endeared herself to many, many people while she was there. Finally, when she was 90, she moved to Myrtle Beach. I mean, that's pretty amazing just to move at 90. And, um, but she did. She came out to Myrtle Beach. And that's when I, well, I, I met her at a LA Shahabas and fell in love with her immediately. She was just something about Adele was just like, she was all love and intuition and just so beautiful, such a beautiful spirit. So it was hard not to just fall in love with her immediately. And I would go visit her a few times in LA. I was living um, north of LA at that point. And so then um, I moved back to Florida to care for my parents because I was getting CNA. I was getting a nurse's assistant degree. And then Adele wrote me and said she'd moved to Myrtle Beach. And when I come visit her, and I did. And at that point, uh, she, uh, she was getting an operation. So she said, could you come help me for a week or two, you know, after the operation? So I said, yes, of course. And, um, uh, I came up for a few weeks. It just kept stretching out. It seemed like something would come up and, oh, I'd have to stay a little longer and a little longer. And I ended up taking care of Adele for the last eight years of her life. And, uh, which was really such a blessing for me. It was a real blessing. And, um, Adele, Adele was the, uh, very influential. One of the blessings was that Adele talked me into marrying my husband, Jeff. I was not going to get married. There he is. <laughs> I was not going to get married again. I just thought I just don't have good taste in men. I just can't pick the right one. So I'm better off not being married. But Adele kept inviting Jeff over. And I was like, why are you inviting him over all the time? But uh, eventually she got us to date, and um, we just maybe had two times we'd gone out together, and we were at a concert of Billy um, Bobby Burns' scene, and Adele says to Bobby, can you play some music for a couple that just sort of got engaged? And so everybody thought it was us, and they were all congratulating us, and Jeff was like, uh, well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what to think. So, you know, next thing you know, we're engaged. And Adele married us, too. She, she, uh, our wedding anniversary is, uh, December 22nd. And, um, Adele, um, she was our, our, uh, she was the one that married us. We had a legal marriage, too, but this is the one that really counts. And anyway, um, Adele was phenomenal. When I first came up and joined her here, she wanted to go to every program on the center. She loved music, plays, art. She just mainly loved people. I mean, um, she'd go to a program, and um, after the program, you know, I'd be tired and, and looking at the door, and there, you know, I could count the people between me and Adele and the door. And I knew that Adele was going to talk to every single one of them. <laughs> she had this poem of popular she liked to read. And it was some, it says something to the effect, if someone wants to talk about God and I don't do that, then I should run to the mosque to pray because I've committed the only sin I know. And um, that was sort of a, a, a real thing for her. Um, she, 
she, um, anyway, I think uh, Adele was probably one of the most remarkable people. I mean, living with her close like I did, you just really see how remarkable she was and how beautiful and how so in tune to people. She always, again, had the really perfect response to people. And you could always tell when she was really like drawn to someone, you could just know that that person loved God very much because, uh, you know, that was what would draw her to someone was their love for God. So she was a really, really remarkable, remarkable person. And, um, oh, she, so many things. There's so many stories. But I think I should let other people tell their stories. But Adele, I think Adele was very magical. And like I said, she really functioned from a place of love and intuition always. And it was very a beautiful thing to see the way she would respond to people. So, you know, I, I want to let other people talk. But I don't think that's All right. Sort of the gist of it. That's beautiful. I hope you come back with a story. You might just find somebody bring something up that you want to share. You're more than welcome to double or triple dip here. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Judy. That was just beautiful. I just want to show this real quick clip of some photos of Adele with a beautiful song in the background about Adele. You'll know, you'll know the voice. And um, then we'll have potluck where you can raise your hand digitally by hitting either Alt Y or Option Y. So let me just put this up real quick. Oops, there we are.
Sorry, took me a minute to get back. Such a beautiful, beautiful woman. We're gonna open it up now for people to share. And again, I think you know how, and if not, it's in the chat box. So um, Peter has been waiting. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ruth. All right, so um, I have a couple of great short memories with Adele. Um, I knew Adele um, when she was in her 90s and when she moved um, back to Myrtle Beach for a second time, I was living here. Um, and one of the special things, um, with a special connections with Adele is we were very close to like birthday twins. My birthday's April 10th and hers was April 9th. So I remember a couple of years celebrating with Adele and coming over to her old condo and getting to, uh, share our birthdays together, sort of for a few moments. Um, I also remember she was very active in the community as well and she enjoyed, um, other being active other than going to the center. Um, I, uh, when she was here, I started a job in 2011 at this big science museum called Wonderworks in town. And she went about a month after it opened with a small group of people and, um, and myself. And that was a lot of fun. Um, one of the pictures in the slideshow that um, Ruth showed was her playing this game called Mindball that Wonderworks used to have where the calmest person wins the game and it reads your brainwave activity. And she played about a 45 minute game with a friend. It went back and forth, but Adele was the champion and that was just fun to watch. Um, and that was, that was very special going to uh, Wonderworks with her. I also remember uh, she was very active in local theaters. She went to the local improv theater and enjoyed seeing shows there and supported uh, myself and the improv cast on stage a number of times and then um i remember another memory of her um we went to this local christmas show at the palace theater um which was in town but they tore it down um and we saw this show called christmas on ice and it was ice skating and music and singing and dancing and a great show and then after the show the cast and uh, uh dancers and singers went out um in the lobby and were greeting people and i remember adele was it was very charming she greeted everyone all the cast members and then when and she gave them all a baba card i remember and when she got to santa claus she gave him a baba card and i remember being in the background and she, uh, i overheard her telling santa that baba is the universal santa claus and that stuck with me um and that was very an interesting charming way to say that to a santa claus so those are um, most of my great memories with adele but she was just a great lively spirit and who uh, was not afraid to speak her mind as well, which I appreciate too. Jay Baba, thank you. Oh, Peter, thank you. Such beautiful stories. Jay Baba, Rosalie. Jay Baba, it's so funny. Uh, I had a fiery relationship with Adele. She could really, she was a fabulous button pusher. Uh, very fiery person, but uh, she had the two sides. She could really be like angelic, like she could say the most, uh, anything she ever wrote to me, wrote, I never threw it away because it was totally inspired. I mean, it was like, um, I, it's so funny. I was listing all these things. Well, for one thing, she wanted to move here and she actually, she wanted to die on Myrtle Beach 
you know, the that's why I'm looking here. There's no one from, oh yeah, Mahu is there. But other, she, the Farsi community didn't, Baba community didn't want her to leave. They just said, please, Adele, don't leave. But it was her destiny and she wanted to be here, Myrtle Beach. Uh, and it, it's interesting, the day she died, I didn't know, I thought she was on her way up. Well, she, she was 97 or whatever, but I knew when she got moved out to Long's, she was too active to die in Myrtle Beach. She had to know what was going on. If it was about Baba, she had to be part of it. So I put her, put her out there with Judy and Jeff and then she could ease up because she was too fiery to die, you know. Just, uh, and that day she died, uh, I, I was very into, uh, I still am, Baba's words to Narina. I came upon this line and I really felt it was her going away present to me. And it says, love makes fast progress through its unbroken action of divine light. May her Baba. And there were fire engines on and on, and there was a fire in North Myrtle Beach, but I thought she was such a fire lady. She just burned out, you know. Uh, I have to say one, there's so many things about her. Actually, Baba said she had eyes like Baba John. I mean, she was, they, he was not telling everyone that, you know. And Phyllis describes her when she was young as drop dead gorgeous. I, I love that too. Uh, she was a terrible driver, automobiles. And when she came from the East Coast, she drove across herself and there was a police escort with her because she was going under the speed limit. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to tell you this. Uh, what a what a service she did for me. She came to visit my very Catholic mother, Catholic enough to be a pope. And we we came. She agreed to come and meet my mother. So it was Mother's Day. And my mother avoided her like the plague. She started cleaning cupboards in the kitchen and Adele finally looked at me and she says, let's go, you know. And I says, well, let me say goodbye to my mother. I go into the kitchen and my mother says, she'll stay for lunch, won't she? She's preparing lunch. My mother would never host a person unless they were in a Catholic habit, a nun, a priest, a brother. So she felt Baba's charge on, on Adele. And I says, well, maybe she'll stay if you ask her. So uh, my mother asked her, and she also says she will like herbal tea, won't she? I mean, she was just like, uh, it was incredible. So we're, we're having lunch. And my father ate and he left. He was not very social, but it was a small table and Adele was on my right and my mother was on my left. And Adele goes, you know, Francis, Rosalie is an important member of our group. And I'm so cowed that my nose is touching my plate because I think my mother's going to blow up. She was, she's so Catholic. I can't tell you just, she didn't say a word, not a word. So we finally, Adele thanked her and we left. Adele wrote a letter to my mother and says, dear Francis, thank you for your hospitality. She could have said your semi-hospitality. 50% <laughs> of the visit was, mm. she says, you're very fortunate to have Rosalie for a daughter. She has met the pure people of this world. And I, Adele showed me the letter before she sent it. And I'll never forget. I mean, what a good friend in Baba, you know, because uh, uh, <laughs> it, it kind of, it, it kind of broke the whole like Catholic,
Catholic structure. And then when you, you know, you have 12 years of Catholic school and, and you know, it was, Adele was like, I have to say her warrior side, she would, when it came to Baba, she was like a warrior, you know, nothing stopped her. Anyway, uh, Jay Baba, I was grateful for my contact with her, but we had our ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> a little karma <laughs> hey, Baba. but I could write a book you know I just kept listening I thought, oh what someone else sharing Jay Baba so beautiful Rosalie please write that book Jay Baba Miguel okay hi everyone good afternoon whatever it is in your place and good night here. Um, I I didn't meet Adele myself, um, but I've been just uh, just transcribing um, uh, letters from Carrie Benjamin. And uh, you said uh, Judy Mangold, who I remember so well from Bauji's talks uh, and chats, and um, that. Um, Adele was the person to connect also with Israel. She was the person who, uh, through her, um, because Israel at that time did not have any relationship with uh, India, any, um, any um, diplomatic relationships with Israel. And, all, and, and Adele was uh, the one who, all the books from India would come to her and she would collect money from everyone by Baba's order in order to pay Adi, Adi Kairani for the books and the sending. And then she would send the books to um, Israel to Kari Ben Shammai. So I thought because you mentioned um, uh, Russia, it would be important to know that she was a very special person for um, Baba in uh, go between to Israel. Jay Baba, Mikhail. Thank you for that information. Yeah. Okay, Baba. Tina, good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I was just going to compliment Mikal on that picture behind her. It was lovely. Um, anyway, um, I did know Adele. And I remember my first memory of her was at a Northeast gathering when she was going to give a talk. <laughs> she had, she was very scatterbrained and she had all these little pieces of paper and clippings and she would drop them and then <laughs> she, <laughs> she would try to pick them up and she would get all confused and it was, it was very sweet actually. Um, another time um, I was in LA and uh, she always wanted to take me to lunch. And if I offered to pay for my, my meal, she would be very angry. She always insisted on paying. And then um, I had this job on a ship on the Rotterdam. We were going on, gonna be the entertainment on a world cruise. And so somehow Adele uh, agreed, you know, she volunteered to drive me to the ship and she got horribly lost running red lights and slamming on the brakes and I, my heart was in my mouth the whole time and when we finally got to the dock they were pulling up the gangplank that's how late we were and and I was yelling stop stop <laughs> you know one more person <laughs> but, but I didn't make it but it was a very harrowing ride it was mr toad's wild ride <laughs> but uh, my last memory of her is um you know when she was in her last days she was there cleaning the lagoon cabin and you know doing that selfless service at at her advanced age which was just so beautiful and touching to me so those were just a few of my memories of her. And, uh, you know, her talks didn't make a lot of sense to me, but <laughs> they were somehow great. Thank you, Tina. That was great. Ah, thank you. 
All right, Betty Loman. Hello. I, um, I, uh, I met Adele uh, at at LA Sahavas, and at that time I was doing um, uh, childcare. Uh, oh wait, go back. I actually I met I met I met her uh, when uh, before then when I I, t I had a dear old Sufi friend Ruth Chase who uh, came, I, came with me to Sahavas one year. And um, because she was a little old lady, I got to stay with her in kind of the special um, place where people, uh, where the guests stayed, Adele, Phyllis. I got, that was, that was neat to be, you know, staying there. And she, um, she just had this radar for people who served. And so, because I was there, helping Ruthie, um, she liked me right away. Uh, and uh, she kind of had me pegged as her, as, you know, as uh, uh, her friend. We, uh, uh, we, oh, and yeah, I was having, uh, I was having uh, some real trouble uh, with my health. Um, and uh, so, and she was a nurse. So I talked to her, I was actually, I was, it was constipation constantly. And I, I, and so she looked, she said, well, maybe it's your, your job. Um, and I'd worked for a while, um, well, quite a while as, as a graphic artist. And it was, it happened to be a, a stressful situation. So, and somehow that just struck me like, wow, you know, she may have it. That may, that may be the right answer. So, um, and hey, you know, she had met Baba, so I just took that to heart. I, I said, oh, you know, and I, I, um, I started, I took an introduction. Oh, she said, why don't you, uh, why don't you take up nursing? <laughs> um, and uh, so um, uh, I went home and, and uh, took an introductory course and was going along. And then... Um, uh, Baba gave me a dream. Um, I'm, so, I'm gonna. I'm. I don't know why I'm distracted by my jacket. I'm gonna take it off. All right. <laughs> Baba, um, uh, my good friend Babs, longtime Baba lover as well, were in this dream, and <laughs> and she was also a graphic artist. And he was sitting in a chair, and, and uh, we, I think we were talking about what what we were to do uh, in in our work work life and I turned to Babsy and I said okay Babsy you do the graphics I'll do the nursing you know and Baba turned and said no he said you you I want you to do it as well you have good perspective that was the word he used that I've always pondered on so I felt like he had to he had to appear personally in my life to sort of uh, uh, supersede <laughs> Adele <laughs> um, and so, indeed, I stuck with graphics for my life, basically. So that was that story of Adele. Uh, but ever since that encounter where I, where I was there with Ruthie, Adele was my, she was my buddy. And then when I started doing childcare, you know, that was, that really got me in good with Adele. She thought that was just, just the epitome of, of service and helpfulness. And she would come, come where, where, the, where the kids were and she'd say, oh, you know, this is just so wonderful. I want to help you. What can I do? And then, uh, and then she'd be gone. Uh, as Rosalie said, she was a very scattered person. And so I finally got it that, um, you know, not, not to expect a great deal of of continuity with I adored her <laughs> but uh, that was just how she was and then um, finally I um, I I went down to the LA Center to give a talk on Oceano I got real interested in Baba at Oceano and so she uh, offered to put me up for a night at her little she had a little house section 8 housing probably uh, uh, on Pacific Coast Highway uh, in LA and she'd been there for years. So what a treat that was. What a treat to be in her little abode just, just for a night. I mean, oh, my Lord, you'd walk in the door and the atmosphere was so rich. Just, I mean, she was just living with 
all these years of artifacts and Bob, oh, so much. Uh, it, it just, you could just breathe it in. It was really quite amazing to spend a night there with her. It was real special. So, yeah, I, I, I was amazed too that she took off to, to Myrtle Beach. I, I think I had talked to Lois a little bit about it. And I think that there was an understanding that the Lois, Lois, who was, I think, maybe the president of the LA group, that it was just gonna be best for her, that she'd be she'd be well, she could be better looked after, I guess. And that that was my understanding that the, the group kind of got in on this decision to, that it would be good for her as it was. And then she lived with Judy all these years. Okay, so that's my story, <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba, pure gems, Betty. Thank you. <laughs> Mahu, Jay Baba. It's okay, take your time. You just need to unmute. There should be a little um, place. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yes, hey. thank you. Jay Baba. Yes, Jay Baba, Mahu, and uh, I'm so uh, thrilled to be here. Thank you for having a program to remembering uh, Adele, honoring her and her life and her dedication and service to beloved Baba. Um, Adele has been a major, major figure in my spiritual um, and personal life. Uh, I met her in, uh, you know, I, I, I lived in Los Angeles and I still do, and she did too, just to meet the people like us. Mm -hmm. And um, so I met her in 1995, November of 1995, when I came to Beloved Baba by his invitation. And uh, back then we had a little center in old Santa Monica, not this big center that we purchased in 1997. And uh, uh, so I went there and the first time she saw me, she came to me and said, hi, and who is this? I said, hi, I'm Mahu, I'm, I'm new to Baba and so forth. And uh, she gave me her phone number. Well, I forgot to call her, but then I went back the next week. There was a Farsi God Speaks meeting um, that was every Saturday evening just before the program and I would just go there because I was new I didn't know people and then after uh, meeting was ended I came down and I met her <laughs> and she she came to me and said hi I said hi you know said you know I gave you my phone number and there was a reason behind it and you never called me <laughs> Well, that was very attractive to me. I felt so much love uh, in that inquiry. I said, oh, sure, I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, life got into me and so forth. Well, to long the, uh, to, uh, you know, not to make the story long, um, uh, she was a very interesting um, blend of mind and heart for me, okay, because at that time, I was coming from intellectual background and so forth, and she had a good hand in that because she was, you know, doing the comparative religion study in Columbia University while living in, in, in New York, and uh, so she had some interest. And then Baba, of course, changed her, her life, uh, and she became a nurse after looking after those three women, Baba women that she was living with in New York. And uh, so she started organizing God Speaks meeting for me and another girl who now live in uh, Amy in, in, in Canada. We had a private meeting with her and uh, so forth, answering all my questions and so forth. Then through all her inspirations and so I became immediately involved after six months in center's work, uh, we were in Sahaba's committee together and then we started doing program. I became program director 
uh, and she was working with me side by side. And the interesting part is like this. She would just sit down and say, well, you're gonna contact this person, that person and ask them if they can do a program. I said, sure, I'll do that. So I would go to them and ask them if they can do a program or play a guitar <laughs> or something. And they would say, oh, you know, uh, I haven't played guitar for years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to sing anymore and so forth. And uh, well, I would just laugh instead of being embarrassed. Um, so, okay, you know. Anyway, so we, we did program design and work together for many, many years. Um, by her uh, mentorship, she would introduce me to many Baba guests that, who met Baba. And I had absolutely no gap background. I was new. And I would just go for it and she would help me and so forth. But the outstanding uh, memories about Adele that um, I remember is her devotion and love for Baba. That was reflected in every little aspect of her life. Unbelievable, that little home that Betty just talked about in Redondo Beach. And that house is, actually that house got burned as I was driving recently. And now they painted it, they, they um, rented it to someone else. Um, it was really an ABOT. As you would enter that house, you see the, you feel the vibration of Baba. And she would just take you in front of Baba picture. And there was a cloth uh, covering the, that there was a cloth that covered Bobo's um, body when he actually dropped his body and she had that and that was in front and and they said well let's go just pray to Bobo now let's go do that let's go and 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 that was it I was just totally taken by that and uh, on top of that I experienced a a very good intuition, unbelievable with Adele. I mean, uh, she would start talking to me about things that was about to occur in my mind. Or sometimes when I was in such agony, my sister-in-law died at all of a sudden or whatever. Um, all of a sudden I would receive a phone call from Adele and say, you know, Mahu, you should remember when somebody dies and that I, I wouldn't talk to her. I was just sitting at home going through my grieving process. When somebody dies, their sanskaras has consumed and come to the end and it's time for them to leave. Not a second more or not a second less, you know, like that. Um, she was extremely generous. If you talk to my husband, uh, and also my son, we all been benefiting from being with Adele and uh, learning from her. Uh, she was with a little means and money that she had. She would take us to the best restaurant in town. If we wanted to know what restaurant has the good food, Adele, we want to go out, you know. I said, well, you got to go to this restaurant like here, you know, we've been there, it's so good. <laughs> so I would just, or we would go to movie theater, watch movies, go to dancing, go to places. And I said, Adele, you like this stuff so much. I said, you know, Mahu, I have love for his creation. This is his creation and I love for that. I have a love for that. I appreciate it. Anyway, um, so, uh, you know, people did, did talk about head scatteredness. Of course, that comes with the age. And, uh, but I was always amazed how even she handled herself, even while she was scattered. Nothing could interrupt her laser focus on serving Baba. And she would immediately bounce back and correct herself. Um, when, she, when we heard that she was moving to Myrtle Beach, I mean, there's a lot that I can share, but when she, uh, we heard that 
she was planning to move to Mersel Beach, uh, of course, it was very hard for me. I was, uh, you know, I was sitting in her home in that little kitchen that was there with that round table. And she said, you know, by the way, I'm, I'm moving to Myrtle Beach. I said, what the hell, you're moving to Myrtle Beach? And she said, yes. And it was, it, it was very hard to, I remember myself getting so emotional, I sat in a car driving like crazy <laughs> around the city trying to comprehend. Oh, you know, it was like, she was like a pillar okay, emotionally, spiritually uh, to us as, as people, uh, you know, follower of Baba in LA. And it, 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 it just like almost we lost our balance when she decided to move to Myrtle Beach in 2008. Uh, she intuitively picked up that we were so impacted by that move. So one day, uh, probably the next day she told me, you know, Mahu, I want you to know moving to Myrtle Beach is not my decision. It's all bubbles. He wants me to go there at this time. And then she said, and I have a work to do. I've got to go there, Mahu. My life, this is part I never said, my life depends on him. He wants me to go and I'm going. And that was it. That kind of sealed it for us. Um, and of course, you know, you, many people know you probably to talk about her life, but Baba told her that you remind me of St. Katrina, Siena. I'm all mixed up right now. Um, this saint, Catherine of Siena. Catherine of Siena, and then told to Fidel that you are Saint Teresa. You remember me of that. And then of course he, he said, you remind me of Moni, my sister, uh, Baba told her. But uh, one time I say this and I finish, um, you know, this was during the, the time that she was moving. I was sitting in her room and she brought a book from that saint. And by the way, she writes so beautifully, Catherine of Siena. And she started, she told me to read from this part to that part. So I did. And then all of a sudden she told me, stop. And at that time she started talking, but the voice was coming from way beyond, beyond. It wasn't Adele's voice. She was, you know, Mahu, you know, she was, it was another realm of possibility. And, uh, you know, I think this was a little gift to me that she was, you know, revealing that she's in touch with other worlds as well. So anyways, love to share. Thank you for the opportunity of, uh, you know, sharing Adele, Jay Hey, Baba Mahu, thank you so much. Beautiful. Catherine. Hey, Baba. Hey, Baba. Well, I just want to thank everybody for everything they've shared. Um, but one thing I want to offer about Adele, because I felt like she was, first of all, I think she was like my friend, my teacher, and my love. I just loved her. And having you tell these stories, just it's bringing this back and it's, you know, it's making my heart very tender. And, um, <clears throat> but she, often I would see her for a half a day on either a Monday or a Friday, we'd do lunch, and spend time and um, talk. It was just wonderful. One time she turned to me cause I was putting something on her while she would sleep. And she said, will you be my mother? So she was just so spontaneous and, and could be so sweet. Um, after she'd take a rest and after lunch, quite often we, we would play over and over again, but it was a five record set of Houston Smith with Bill Moyer on the wisdom of faith. It was comparative religions. And this was really pretty heady stuff. And 
I know Adele would have that could be scattered. We, you know, we we know how that she that could play out. But she was so focused when we would watch this. She brought the newspaper every single time. Want to go over some articles, but when we watch this recording, which was, as I say, was a five record set, um, very involved and a lot of information on it. She, she not only got all this, I was sometimes, you know, thinking, gee, I wonder if I watered that plant, you know, and if I colored and she'd say, well, what did he say on this? And I would be caught, you know, with <laughs> shameful, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to mutter something together. But she would put it in, you know, Baba must have been working on it, like, wake up. I was the one that wasn't focused at all on that. And she was so sharp and she was so intelligent. And she'd often say at that time, I think Judy mentioned and also uh, Rosalie, that she had, a, uh, she had a period of time when the book came out about Narina. And she would say, she'd say, Catherine, you can't believe how Narina was so different, how to even describe her. She was so intelligent and not intelligent in an ordinary way. And she would, I'd say, well, give me some examples. And she would, but the thing was also, Adele was very, very intelligent. And probably like Narina, there's some arc where it's intelligence, but it's mixed with such deep and wide intuition. And she could pick up on things. Sometimes I, because I don't, uh, take my things to people. But sometimes Adele would start sniffing around and ask for something and she she would, she'd get right to the root of the problem. And one time it was something I knew what to do, but it, it she, after she kind of centered in on it and then she said, have nothing to do with this person or whatever, um, it was like a thunderclap. It came with an authority. And I did what she said, which is what I thought I was trying to do before, but suddenly it came together. And Adele to me was all about Baba, all about helping other people. And she's just extraordinary. And I'm trying to think Judy would know, most of you probably know, did Adele, wasn't Adele given an instruction from Baba to spread his message of love? Because we all, she always carried cards. And so if we went out, I always was getting more of those little wallet size cards for a backup in case Adele ran out of cards. Because if we were at a restaurant, she'd start talking to the waiter and start telling him about Baba. So she went and she would work it and try to find a natural opening. Um, but she was just extraordinary, just extraordinary. All right, Jay Baba. Thank you, Catherine, for bringing up that intuitive side. I certainly felt it when I was around her. All right, BJ. Good evening. Oh, Jay Baba, good evening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, certainly, those uh, ladies who met Baba, and uh, definitely they are intuitive, you said correctly. Uh, something special I felt in them. And uh, actually, I am a great admirer of uh, those Western ladies who met Baba. Uh, are you, uh, am I audible? Yes, am we, I audible? Yes, dear, we hear yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, I've been a great admirer of those Western ladies who were with Baba, who met Baba. And uh, means uh, so I was on a campaign to uh, to meet all those great ladies in the West who met Baba. And when uh, uh, Rosalie talked about uh, her driving, uh, Adele Walkins driving, <laughs> and uh, her uh, warrior kind of nature. So I thought I will also share because when I went to LA and uh, she took the lead and she has taken me, she driven me around LA 
and i was sitting in a car in the car with her and i was thinking she was then 62 years old and i was uh, like it was 1980 so i was like a 29 year old boy and i was kind of a, <laughs> a little afraid that whether she drives me all right uh, she took me to um, around and uh, jean adriel yeah. so i could see jean adriel also in the senior home and uh, really i appreciate uh, their dedication their passion and their love for india i certainly enjoy and i pay my respect and i am so grateful that uh, and uh, means i could still uh, i cannot forget that driving always i <laughs> visualize adele taking me around Ali, my first drive and meeting those great ladies. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to share. And uh, I'm glad that uh, she later on she uh, ended up at Myrtle Beach. And uh, though she looked uh, very simple and very soft, and her eyes really shiny. and uh, i am happy she ended up at myrtle beach and uh, i i feel so satisfied that i could meet <laughs> all those ladies great ladies uh, who come who met baba and i i am so happy thanks baba and thank thank you all jai baba for uh, let me sharing this and uh, i am happy jai baba thank you Ruth. Yes, Vijay, thank you. What a wonderful thing. I I I'm so grateful for for your sharing just the remembrance of these women that yeah. you've been with and I can't imagine driving in the car but just going to see Jean Adriel and just all the women. You're so yeah. you're a wonderful bridge yeah. for us. Right. Oh. Best. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Yeah, Vijay. Hey, Baba. Elizabeth. Baba. Yes. Hello, everyone. So my experience with Adele, whom I met in 2009, was not like many of yours, which was over the long term and like many rich experiences like Mahu's and Judy's and probably many others. Mine was like this point in time. a few points in time that were they were very intense and from what i'm hearing you say she must have moved so her intuition must have moved her to connect with me because basically it happened when i sat beside her december 2009 when i was at the center after christmas it was <clears throat> sorry i'm going to cry don't mean to the year my father died in march and uh anyway <clears throat> my sister who's my half sister but she's been my uh, sorry my step sister but she's been my sister since she was 4 so anyway um she had produced this huge book of uh family photos of our combined families we have a very unusual difficult family situation a difficult meaning complex and um in it were pictures of um my brother who had died when he was 23 a very handsome young man <clears throat> and this the the program at, at the meeting house that night it must have been a saturday night was about norena and uh, of course as you guys probably know i always have a zillion questions because monkey mind is always working and um they and so i said to adel i said is is it true that norena um had a nervous breakdown you know it really bothered me and it bothered me because there are two suicides in my family close family and of course if you've ever had any of that you know you really don't get over it it's impossible so so um Yeah somehow I must have told her 
I must have confided in her because it was right either before, I think it was before the meeting started. And she got very interested in my brother who's, who was extremely handsome. And um, she said, okay, she said, I want you to come visit me. And uh, she told me no, that, that Narina had not had a real nervous breakdown. I don't know what it was, but she wanted me to come talk to her. So she, I don't know if you can see this. She gave me Judy's name. Judy's name and phone number, I still have it. <laughs> anyway, and so I went to see Adele, I think the next day. And um, she immediately started, and I don't know why she chose me to come, but she, she did. I, it wasn't me, it was, it, well, it must've been Baba. And now that Mahu has said that Adele had work to do, I think part of it had to do with me. Anyway, she she made Judy print out all these photographs of Baba. So I want to show you the one she had printed out. So this one, I don't know where that is, but of course in the 20s or 30s. Um, this one on the ship, but I don't know which ship or where Baba was going. Can you see that? So it was either the one to going to England or from England to either Italy, Genoa or something. This one, I don't know where that's from either, but another one of those early pictures of Baba. And then this one, which is the first picture, which was the picture that hit me the hardest when I first came to Baba, truly in 1985. And I had this amazing breakdown like everybody else with the, uh, well, like many people with the sobbing and, you know, uh, uncontrollable, and finally getting to the point of the message internally, I won't, I'm with you always. And then, uh, sorry, I'm, this is unexpected. Then she gave me this photograph, this card of Baba on Seclusion Hill, but it's the one that says the happiness of God realization is the goal of all creation, the real happiness which comes through realizing God is worth all physical and mental sufferings in the universe, then all suffering is as if it were not. The happiness of God realization is self-sustained, eternally fresh and unfailing, boundless and indescribable. And it is for this happiness that the world has sprung into existence. <clears throat> and then before I go, she gave, before I went, she gave me this picture of her with Baba and the car at the center. Can you guys see that? And on the back, this is the, this is the, the kicker. She says, um, for beloved, uh, for beloved Baba's Elizabeth Robinson, his one, so substitute your name, okay? Because I'm sure this is for everyone, not just for me. His one and only Elizabeth Robinson. He reminds you that when you leave all to me, I dare not neglect you and you get relief from all your predicaments as I am the ocean of love and compassion. Signed, Avatar Meher, Meher Baba, December 27, 2009. And then, <laughs> she gave me this book, you know, which is the story of Meher Baba, of course, his life, his message is followed by uh, Ray uh, Kirklove, I guess. And she wrote for Elizabeth, um, the one beloved Meher Baba, love and the only one, Adele Wilkins. So you can see the, whoops, there. And so, you know, um, I, I, didn't, I don't know if I saw her after that. I might have, but I remember when she was ill, I called her and she did not know who I was. And uh, <clears throat> I think I was at the center and I wanted to go see her, but um, it was heartbreaking for her not to know me, but it was her, it was her last days. Anyway, so, she touched me briefly, but intensely. Anyway, she bought them. And thank you, Judy, for all that work you did that day. I was there. <laughs>
Jay Baba. Jay Baba, Elizabeth, what an amazing share. Thank you. You you even displayed the pictures so perfectly we could see everything. Thank you, Elizabeth. But your heart, that was on display, and I'm so grateful. Judy? Hi. 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 Um, yeah, I just wanted to add on to what Betty was talking about with Adele and medical uh, health and medical things. Uh, even though she was a nurse, she knew everything about alternative health. She knew what's up to date on all the uh, the latest. And um, when she was, uh, when Baba was still alive, she was also communicating all the time with Gohar. She felt that Baba had linked her up with Gohar in that 1952 visit. And so she wrote Gohar pretty continuously. And whenever Gohar needed supplies, Adele would go to her brothers and get them. And um, or uh, sometimes uh, Gohar wanted, um, you know, the latest literature on an illness and Adele would find it and send it to her. So she was very involved with um, helping Gohar and getting other people to get involved with that too. And then, but then um, just when I knew her, you know, people who had health issues would sometimes come to Adele and tell her their problems. And, she get out. She had this big book about, um, you know, sort of an alternative health book. You know, what vitamins to take for what disease, and she would pull out her book and she would discuss it with them. And you know, sometimes it really did seem to help people get better too. It was amazing. So she was always very involved in health, and that was kind of a cool thing. And it was very nice to hear your sharing, Elizabeth. That was very sweet of you. I, I did appreciate that. And um, you know. Thank you again. In her last days, people did did come out to see her. It's too bad you should have come. She would have known you if she'd seen you. I know, and um, you know. So um, yeah, my bunny had baby bunnies, and people would come to visit, and she'd want the bunnies, and she'd have these little baby bunnies hopping all over her bed, and she would sit there and talk to people and uh, if you could sing at all she'd want you to sing to her she had all these people coming and singing to her so it was very sweet i, I wish you had come anyway she would have known me i'm sure anyway it's good to see you again and we used to play adele that um the song of bobby bernstein we played that a lot during her last days it was so beautiful and it really made adele happy yeah, and I heard Bobby play that um, at, at, I'm not sure which night it was, it might, it might have been that night, it was the night you might have uh, uh, first played it, the Adele song, and it uh, was, it was great. I remember telling you how wonderful it was then, and it still is wonderful. <laughs> it's a great song, it really embodies Adele, it's so upbeat and, um, you know, lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll mute myself now. <laughs> me too. I forgot that part, Bobby. I meant to talk about that and then it escaped me. I got caught. Oh. I was crying too much. Elizabeth, when was that? I don't remember. I didn't catch that. When well, the, the time that I met Adele and she, you know, was in December 2009. Uh, and I'm not sure if you were playing that song then or at a different time. It might have been later that you played yeah. that song. Um, but I remember, I think it was the first time you played it at the meeting house or one of the first times. It was a fairly new song when I first, when you played on the piano. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that was 2015 that I wrote it. Then that's probably yeah. when I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, our Jeff, you've had your hand up a long time. Can you hear me, hear me okay? Sure, you sound good. Anyway, um, I'll go back to in January 1968. I took an art class. I was going to Columbia University. I took a, an art class as an elective and most of us were uh, stuck painting these uh, still lifes, you know, boring still life. So there's a guy a few easels away from me who was got somehow got permission to paint Baba 
but and I had never heard of Baba and everything like that. But one day he asked me if I'd like to go to a Baba meeting. Now, I, you know, I, I didn't have any, he was a wonderful guy. So I, I didn't have any excuse. So I wound up going down to with, a, I, I brought another buddy of mine and I, and we went down to West 57th Street uh, to Little, Little Carnegie Hall, which is where these meetings were, took place. And it was a little recital hall in the middle of winter and the doors open on the fourth floor and there's a hallway, it's about 15 feet wide and 20 feet deep that leads into this, this uh, uh, recital hall. And, but my impression is all these old ladies uh, that came forward Black ladies, thin ladies, Jew Jewish ladies, Puerto Rican ladies, you know, uh, Jew you know, all, all manner of these ladies and they come up and they introduce themselves and they are hugging us and passing us from one to the other to the other. And it took about, you know, it took about almost a half hour to get actually into this place. And one of those ladies, of course, was Adele. And, um, you know, we, I mean, we, we stepped off this elevator. And it was like, uh, three long lost nephews that had shown up at a family reunion. And this, this was like, this just didn't happen in New York City where people just come up and hug you and introduce themselves. It's pretty, you know, New York's a little bit reserved. And so, uh, but anyway, so the, there, were, there weren't many young people that went to these memes and mainly older people and they'd all met Baba. And you could actually, uh, um, since I was new to Baba and everything, I could ask them what it was like to be with Baba. And so I got all sorts of firsthand accounts. I didn't have to read it on <laughs> in the books. But Adele started coming up to meet me at college. And, you know, she went to Columbia many years earlier. So we would meet in the cafeteria about every week. And I could just ask her anything I wanted, you know, about Bob and what it was like to be with him and, and all the Bob stories. And week after week, she would come up. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I'm, she's in her fifties and I'm just, you know, probably 20. I don't know how old I was. And, uh, and then what happened is in the spring of 68, uh, there were all these demonstrations and protests at Columbia and all sorts of you know, it was all sorts of upheaval. There were police around and barricades and students were uh, occupying these buildings and everything. We would walk around in all this chaos. But one day she brought a box of universal messages. And so <laughs> we went around, we would hand out these, you know, universal messages to everybody. And somehow the president of the university found out that this lady was handing out these, these brochures, you know, these universal messages, and he called her up to, uh, you know, to reprimand her. I mean, of all the things, I mean, there are riots going on, there are students occupying buildings, there are police and all that, and he, he gets fixated on the most minor traffic violation, so to speak, and has Adele go before the, you know, the, the, president of the university, I, I, it was hilarious. But uh, one thing that, that Adele did say is that back when she was a student, um, and she, I don't know if this was in the, the Riverside Church, but one of the buildings around Columbia, she, there was a, a picture of Jesus on the wall. And as just as a young student, long before she knew Ababa, she, she looked up and said, one day I'm going to meet Jesus. And, you know, there it was. <clears throat> but she was just adorable. And, uh, you know, and the thing, an incredible thing is, is that she remembered, I mean, it didn't remember Elizabeth's name, but she was unbelievable in remembering people's names. I mean, and you have to be very personal to remember people's names. And I, I was just, I found it extraordinary. Thousands, you know, that she knew by name and, and she connected with you in such a real way. I mean, it's the personal side of Baba, she was like an embodiment of. <clears throat> so 
I could say some other things, but there are uh, more around to share. Jay Bobble. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. That's just beautiful. Just I just have to pause a minute, take that in. Thank you. Diana. Thank you. Jay Baba. Jay Baba to you all. Um, it's I'm I've been connecting with so many things that have been said. And um, and yes, Jeff, uh, she was adorable, but I also agree with Rosalie. Uh, Rosalie described her as fiery. And I remember that Adele could also be pretty fierce. And some of the, the biggest bangs in my heart, you know, some things that she has said to me have been very painful. Um, also some things have been so heartwarming and um, expansively wonderful. She was all things in that way. I also uh, connected with Tina mentioning her scattered side. Um, I used to live in LA and Adele would be asked to give programs sometimes. And yes, the, the papers were flying out of her hands and falling all over the floor. And so eventually um, somebody figured out it would be good to have someone keep her on track. So um, Jeff McGuire was chosen and he would host. Adele's talk so that as Adele got off topic, he would steer her back to where she really wanted to be. It was, it worked out very well that way. Many of you have mentioned Adele's service work. And yes, I remember her asking, um, I think she would ask people if they had medicines to send um, in her box to go her. She was always sending medications with people who were going to India so that go her supplies could be kept up. Um, but also she, she did personal service to different people. And um, Judy mentioned that people would bring their problems to Adele. Adele knew stuff about everybody and a lot of their private anguishes and very intimate difficulties. And I remember a time when a woman told me about an occasion when her daughter had gone to a party, her daughter was a teenager, and something really awful happened at the party, really crummy. Um, the next day, Adele had already made um, set up for the daughter to meet with a counselor to work through what the daughter had gone through. I mean, she was right on it immediately to take care of people. She didn't just listen but she knew who to contact and how to connect people with, with help. It just was in her nature. Um, I also saw that one time when I was in Myrtle Beach and I was walking to with Adele to Baba's house in Myrtle Beach and someone was coming the, away from Baba's house who, and Adele couldn't pass someone without, without um, reading them. And this woman who we had met on the path to Baba's house stopped and started telling Adele how important Adele was to her and how much Adele had helped her at a certain time. And you could just see the love zapping in between, you know, between their hearts. And Adele impulsively just, she was a tall woman, this other woman, Adele just reached up and gave her a big hug. It was so spontaneous and it was so beautiful to witness. It was just Adele's heart springing out of her in such a beautiful way. Adele sent cards to a lot of people. And like Elizabeth, I also received cards. Rosalie received cards. So many people received cards. And they always had these beautiful love messages about Baba's love for that person and who Baba was um, and how special you were to Baba. She made you feel so good in her cards. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that she was so in touch with people. If you went to visit her in her place, her sweet little place on Pacific Coast Highway, it was a small place. You sat down to visit with her and before long the phone would ring and she'd have to break off speaking with you because someone had called to tell her something or ask her for something. And, and then she took care of that and then she came back and visited with you and then the phone would ring again and she took care of that. She was like command central, um, you know, for, for Baba people in 
in LA and it was just so beautiful to see. And she seems to still be connected with all of us and by the heart phone, J Baba. J Baba, Diana, that was beautiful. A rounded picture. Catherine, go ahead. Um, just as people are speaking, it makes me think of some other things. Um, Judy will certainly remember this. Didn't Adele have a favorite song? Uh, I think it's You Are My Everything. Do you remember her singing that and she liked it to be sung to her? Just correct me, anyone, if, you, um, if it's something else. Um, yeah, it's called You're My Everything. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're My Everything, yes. Didn't you sing it to her uh, often? I, I sang it to her. And also, I was wanted to say that um, Bowji asked her to sing it I remember for him. That. And like, so one morning, she came over to my house with Judy, brought her here, and then she sang it over the chat. And it wasn't her thing to be a, you know, like to do something like that. It took a little bit of, um, you know, she, she had come out of uh, not thinking that she was a singer and she did a beautiful job. Made Fauci very happy and I'm sure Baba very happy too. And I've heard you do that one at the center as well on the piano. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, it's interesting because the words in there, you're, you're the song that I sing in the book that I read. And I had a connection with Adele with books and with music. She had, she, one thing about her with books is that she would send books to India, to Mani, uh, to read to Baba, like, you know, mysteries. And, you know, she, she loved, uh, and, along with the medical supplies, she, she, she um, sent books and also I, I got to know her through, especially because she was donating Baba books to various libraries. She had a project where she donated books and she donated to book, uh, libraries where I worked as well. So I don't know if that's a little known fact about her. You know, I'd also like to uh, mention, it was said about Adele writing to people and, uh, when she would come over to my place and we had that time, she would always want to take uh, more than an hour and she'd want to write cards to people, but she put in long involved uh, messages to them and she spent a lot of time on it. It wasn't something that she was just zip, zip, zip real quick. She would labor over not even a full sentence. She'd get halfway through and she'd really be feeling it through. And then when the whole thing was put together, it it just, it rang a baba. It rang a baba. But it wasn't something that was just, as I say, quick. She really was putting so much of her heart in it. And there was a story uh, when she was with Baba and had met him, they were writing to write a letter. Everyone was to write a letter to Mara. And she struggled with that. She struggled and Baba helped her with the letter. But I always thought she still struggled with these letters, but it was, it was she was pulling some essence to it. It was just something to see. You could feel the heart quality in it. So whoever got these uh, letters, lucky mm -hmm. you. Thanks, Catherine. Bobby. Mahu, would you like to share? Uh, like what Catherine said, as people are sharing, uh, you know, more things are coming to me. And um, so uh, one thing I wanted to share that Adele took a very great, I mean, why do we talk all this about Adele? To me, um, she left a remarks in everyone's heart. Those are the good impressions, sanskaras we accumulate. And mm -hmm. uh, as a, a remarkable servant of God and how you can live your life with minimal means. I mean, you enter that little hut with her apartment was just very little and the minimum, like Betty said, section eight and so forth. But 
full of love. You open immediately, I would go and open her refrigerator. Everything was well situated, very healthy eating and so forth. So for me, she was an inspiration of how to live a worldly life, how to live in the world, but not to really be of it. She really used every little uh, part of this creation to help others, to make others happy and to serve Baba. So for me, every little act that she was doing is like, oh, okay. Baba well, was very thirsty because I looked for Baba for many, many years and he was hiding himself. So, um, and then when people are talking about her being fierce and so forth, she did have that feature. But the way I got it, I mean, there was times that I burst into crying with her comments. The way I looked at it was that she would take a great interest in my life. She would see that my ego was pumping up. She was seeing that I would like to glorify myself and this and that. So she was bringing it back to a level, to the heart level, where the heart takes over and the mind influence being minimized. That's how I look at her, some of her comments. There was a mixed feeling in LA, perhaps there is a still, um, about her. Some people could not understand her. I mean, they would not talk to her for years, believe it or not. And some people adored her always at her doorstep, like myself. So there was different take on how she was treating people. And like now, whatever happens in our life, we have our takes. And, uh, but her uh, being sometimes quote unquote harsh or upfront, there was a merit to it. She wanted to let me know that I'm going overboard with glorifying myself. I'm taking myself so seriously as a program director. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. She was immediately bringing it back, back to Baba. And uh, perhaps I like to share, but I really feel she was a fifth plane saint. She really was in a higher plane of consciousness, but such souls are veiled. We don't really know uh, the level, deep level that they're connected with the source. One more thing uh, that um, Elizabeth inspired me. I have many pictures of Adele writing with the beautiful handwriting behind it and so forth, but uh, I, don't, I don't have it handy. But she has been in my major events of life. One, I had a civil marriage. I did not have any of my family here and I had a civil marriage. We went to the court and my, the only person on my court was Adele. I don't know if, how can I show this, this picture? I don't even know how to show it. You have to hold it up to the screen near where the camera is. So, and then the somebody's gonna have to. Is... <laughs> uh, maybe anyway, my else. camera is not that, uh, well, whatever. I mean. So mm -hmm. the camera is looking at the side of your face. So turn yeah. the to the side. There it is. Yeah, it, but you have to Can bring it see? closer. You have to bring it. No, but you have to bring it. Stretch your stretch your left arm out in front of you. That yeah. Now closer. Keep going. Stretch it out further. <laughs> well, it's hard. I don't Can know how to do it. Her? I mean, <laughs> these are all the four by six. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's her sitting with me and my husband and my mother-in-law. So this is in the court. Uh -huh. She just came oh. to be my spiritual mother. Wonderful. I, I, sorry that I can't. And this is at the hospital when my son Ma was born. Mahijan, your camera is to your right, not on your computer. Your camera is on the right. Camera is on her left. On her right. On her right, I mean. Uh, one day I'll fix it. I'm sorry. Not not on the computer, but you have a video cam that's on the right. Do you know that? Uh, it's on the center. It is an external no. webcam. No, not that. Huh. Not yeah. that one. We're looking at an external one sitting on your desk to your right. 
We're looking at your there, right. Now yeah. we see your face. Where your hand is? Where your hand is now? Hey, let's go. Yeah, there. look, look yeah, toward your right, no. and you'll look at us. Come on. <laughs> I don't think she knows she has another it camera. Is, oh, yeah. So many it cooks is. in the kitchen. I'm sorry. I I I have to fix this. Uh, that's a that's a cue for me to fix. You're getting closer. Anyway, You're getting closer. Yeah. Uh, Mahu, Mahu, Mahu. Mahu. Take that take that picture and just. Uh, turn it a little bit further to your right, just a teeny bit. Now move it down a little bit. Okay, now get it closer. I won't tell you when to stop. More, more, coming? more, 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 more. Perfect. Getting closer, 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 more. Now more, you can more. see her with the white hair. Oh, oh my bad. My bad. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there that's, you that's are. Her. Beautiful. That's her. And the interesting part now, is she brought a very beautiful photo of Baba and framed yeah. nicely right. and put it there in the room that I was there. And as soon as the doctor arrived, she turned back and says, Who's this beautiful man shining? I said, Well, her name, his name is Meher Baba. <laughs> I then brought that photo. To the of, uh, to the room I was in, you know, saying anyway. And there are more pictures, but I'm sorry, I can't do a good job on this. Yeah, that's that that's that's the thing about Adele. I mean, I'm sure many people have memories, but she was like an auntie, mother, mentor, teacher, everything to me, and. I am uh, keeping myself emotionally not to cry, but yeah, I'm very grateful to Baba for Adele walking. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Just throwing this in. Just to learn how to do the tech stuff. <laughs> That's all right. Betty. Just one thing, Mahu, your camera was right in front of where your picture was. I don't know where that what camera it is, but look around on your desk and see if you can find it. Thank oh, you. good idea. I will do that. I need to really work on this. I mean, there was a time I didn't even have a camera. So now I do, but I think it's the wrong angle. You're right. Yeah, Angela or Fairste or Ruthie or somebody can help you. Okay, sure. I'll Thank, ask. You. Thank you if they have time. Okay. Jai Baba Mahu, Jai thank Baba. you. So much love. Thank you. Yeah, so much love from her and Baba and yourself and everybody else. Yeah. Jai Baba, you're so right. Yeah. Okay, Betty, are you there? Yeah. Uh, I, the one thing I noticed that wasn't mentioned yet is that uh, she took uh, a kind of a personal interest in uh, at least a couple of, I imagine there were lots of stories, but there was, a, and I'm, I think this one, a long time ago back in New York, I think she had a, she had a, a, a real, it was kind of like the way a social worker would, she had a, knew a family with a, a, a very poor and she, she helped them and she identified one of their children was kind of special and how I wish I, I I'm vague about this, but I, I know it's in it, it might have been in Phyllis's uh, Awakener where she talks about the different lovers um, and maybe maybe others of you will know that there was a young it was a girl or a boy and they never became a Baba lover, but she helped them with school or helped them in their lives to uh, because there's their situations were dire and and she was and also later i i remember again hearing it i think it was a young man in in california somewhere that she took an interest in him and and uh, you know might have given likely gave him money and gave him whatever support he needed and i'll bet you there were more she kind of acted like this social worker and the secret social worker or baba helper to to these kids kids so i just wanted to add that <clears throat> also just quickly because i'm talking our, our next program is going to be reading this funny book uh, best christmas pageant ever it's a group reading 
that happens at three today. So totally off topic, but I just wanted you to know that, that that's coming up next. All right. Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> That'll be fun. Rosalie, would you like to share? Share what? Share what? Um, uh, actually, uh, Baba sent Adele and I think Phyllis also to to meet with the poor in New York. They were, you know, he encouraged them to do that. Uh, Adele, I, I have this note here. She was, I would just say she was humble in sharing Baba. So there was just a beautiful hum humility about it. And, uh, and it was so sweet, you know, it was like, uh, it was almost like a child sharing. Um, I didn't think of Adele at all as intellectual. No, she was incredibly intuitive and, um, and she, she had a harsh side and then she had this tender uh, angelic side. Uh, a funny thing was they were called, Baba called them Philadelphia. <clears throat> when we first saw them, <clears throat> when they came, when they were not supposed to come, or, you know, uh, he said, Philadelphia. <clears throat> so he gave them that name. Um, Phyllis and Adele had gone to a psychic one time. And I'm sure she was a very good psychic because Phyllis was very psychic herself. And I don't know who, but Adele had been a famous general. I, I never got the name and it didn't matter, but I could see that in her. You know, she took command and uh, that fearless, you know. And uh, I also thought, she was passionate. If she didn't think something was right in our country, she'd write her senator. She didn't think Obama doesn't want me in politics. You know, it's like, it was practical, write your senator. Uh, I, I love that about her. She was, uh, she didn't quibble about things like that. You know, she was, she was an Aries, straight out. You know, she was fiery. Um, I, um, I had this time when I had been uh, invited, just to show you a, a, a little thing. I had been invited to dinner at Adele's. And when I'm ever I am invited for dinner, it's such a treat that I don't eat much before I come so I could really enjoy it. <laughs> well, I got there with Laura Crabtree and there was no dinner. <laughs> there was a little bowl of these dried up, uh, I, sw I think there was supposed to be healthy Cheetos. And uh, so anyway, uh, and the phone kept ringing and she kept inviting people for this dinner, but there was no dinner. And then she had me set the table. So it was big enough for six people. So I set the table and I saw her look at me and she went. And I says, what Adele? I says, I'm not Emily Post. I said, I, I put the same thing on each side for each person. And, and then it was, for me, it was like, uh, um, uh, I was very hungry too. And then at one point I was there standing beside her and I just knew it was like an energy thing that I had to get out of there. <laughs> and, uh, but, I, but if you went for the phone, she always wanted to know who it was. So I thought, finally, I, I got to the phone somehow. She didn't pull it out of my hand and I, I uh, called Jenny Caleb, Jenny Zenner at the center. And I says, Jenny, uh, please come for me. I have to leave. Oh, she says, oh, it can't be that bad. I says, Jenny, please come for me when you can. 
So I went outside because I, I had not driven there. So I went outside in Briarcliff West. They have trees and I sat under a tree. And then Adele came with Laura Crabtree on one arm and Jonathan Burroughs on the other arm. And she came up to me and she says, why did you leave, Rosalie? Why did you leave? I says, Adele, I can't be with you when you're like that. You're like an electric wire. I says, I, I couldn't be with you. And she couldn't hear me. <laughs> and so Jonathan says, she says you're like an electric wire, Adele. And anyway, she called me the next day and apologized. She was, she was great at apologizing. And I say, I very much admire that, you know. And uh, that sticks in my mind. It was like turning something into something sweet, you know. And, it, you know, I was grateful for my times with her. I was grateful for my growth with her. She was a real person that you grew around, you know. She was very dynamic. Anyway, oh, I have to tell you the kicker though. At the LA uh, Sahabas, they would pull one ticket for to win a trip to India. Well, I had a ticket in there. And at the time I happened to be in India and they pulled a ticket, they pulled my ticket. I didn't find this out till after Adele had passed. <laughs> And uh, Adele says, they said my name. And Adele says, pull someone else. She's in India. <laughs> and I, the group went, no, she won. She won. And I have to say that was my last time to see Mara in India. So I was very happy that the group, you know, didn't listen to her at that moment. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know. Uh, God bless Adele. She was she she was a fierce fire for Baba, yeah, fierce and soft, yeah. Jay Baba, Jay Baba, I love to hear about a whole person, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm hearing now. Oh, yeah. I long for that in myself. Thank you so much, everyone. Judy. <clears throat> Well, can you hear me? Anyway. Can you hear me? Yes, Jeff, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Okay. Uh, well, Judy asked me to tell this story. Um, a few years or before Adele died, she was living with us and uh, we were asked to go down someplace in Myrtle Beach. And on this particular highway, there were these beautiful, tall pine trees, or cedar, probably cedar trees. And uh, for some reason, Adele decides, oh, we should cut this down and take it home for a Christmas day. And which, you know, it's a nice idea, but the tree was, say, 60, 70 feet high, you know. And uh, you couldn't get it on a tractor trailer. And uh, thankfully, it was summertime. So I said, well, I'll tell you what. Let's wait until it's a little closer to Christmas, and then we'll come down and get it. And Adele was real quiet for a little bit. And she says, you passed the test. <laughs> Whatever that was. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have passed the test because I would have tried to explain to her why the trees were too big. <laughs> but Jeff got it right. He just made her happy. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. She was fun. Adele was fun. Uh, she was like a, she was about as close as I can imagine what it's like to have a real um, I just felt comfortable when I was around her. Uh, she would call me up several times a week to ask me if 
take her and Judy places or go with her and Judy someplace. And uh, and then finally, after about a year and a half, two years, she comes up to me one day and says, puts her hands on her hips. She says, I wish you'd ask Judy out on a date. I said, Adele, Judy doesn't like me. I irritate her, which was true. And uh, I said, oh, no, you don't. She thinks a lot of you. Okay. So I uh, I called her, and if any of you have ever called you, you know that when you call her, you get a voicemail. And so I left her a voicemail and said, would you like to go out to a movie? And after about three days, I hadn't heard back, which is normal. I didn't know that yet. And um, I thought, oh, well, okay. That's fine. Every, I don't have, now I've done what Adele asked. Yeah. And about 10 minutes later, Judy calls up. She says, yes, let's go to a movie. <laughs> that was our first date. <laughs> that was our first date. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was rather interesting. Very sweet. Very somehow, sweet. Somehow, I guess I grew on you a little bit. Yeah. What was the movie you guys saw? <laughs> Johnny Depp and the Lone Ranger. Oh, I love that movie. I love that movie. I thought it was hilarious. It is yeah. funny. I love Tonto, of course. That was my what favorite. What movie was it? What was yeah. it? Yeah. Lone Ranger with Johnny oh. Depp. <laughs> mm. oh. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to see you two together here today. That's just such oh, a thank you. sweet, wonderful thing. Ma, uh, Mahu. Yes, I, I just want to be very quick. I forgot to thank Judy Mangold and, of course, later on, Jeff, um, that they got married for all the beautiful work that she did from the time Adele moved to Myrtle Beach all the way to the end. We were so pleased and amazed at the level that Judy devoted her life and took care of Adele. And I'm sure she had her times and I'm sure she enjoyed it. And when we would visit Adele in Myrtle Beach, Judy was always there so patiently, always with a smile <laughs> and laugh and so forth. And later on, of course, Jeff, whom I hadn't, haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person. But <clears throat> I really am grateful uh, for the presence of, uh, you know, yours to her life and all the work that you did. It, it wouldn't be possible Otherwise, and I'm sure Baba arranged it. Baba arranged it so beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to thank you for thank that. Thank you, but you know, Adele, Adele was, um, she had a way. She could be so sweet and she could be so difficult too. Like she told me she wanted to get to the programs on time. She'd get very upset if I didn't get her to the programs on time. But then no matter what I did, you know, like even if I really started early, like at the very last minute, she'd have to go to the bathroom. And there it was, it was like late again. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> or, you know, she, she had a way that, um, yeah, she, she, I think, you know, she really, um, helped me a lot, even though it wasn't always easy with her. I felt like she was really helping me. I learned patience and other things, but and I didn't have enough patience really. Yeah. And she definitely helped me with that. I remember some friends of mine, um, uh, Irma, Irma and Carl. Remember them? And they were yes. going to take Adele somewhere, and they got their hours early, and they still got a late start. <laughs> she, she was amazing. Yeah, there was a time I, I used to give her a ride to the center. I was gladly also her chauffeur at times. And I would just go there. I had to go out of my way to pick her up. And then we go to LA center. And she wasn't there. But apparently she was taught, called several people. And those people got there five minutes early and they left. So I was just, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, there were episodes like that, but it's just like life, you know, we have everything together, good and bad and salt and sweet and whatever, yeah. 
but she was so cute. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, Catherine, you have your hand up. You're so patient. Well, um, you know, we keep hitting different subjects back and forth, but one little uh, story for me was about her little ADD, her, uh, you know, her mind would kind of not focus at times. Um, and Judy will remember this. Never, ever, ever take Adele to the dollar store. It took <laughs> two and a half hours putting stuff in the wagon, out of the wagon. They had to open up an entirely different aisle, a cash register, while she was sorting this out. It was, I, I just can't, I can't even express enough. Adele and the dollar store was, that was just something to behold. That's <laughs> that all. That would be a funny <laughs> song, Adele and the dollar store. I well, I run. came back real late. I was supposed to be back in like 4.30 and it was 6.30. It was dark. <laughs> and, uh, I, so I'm thinking, oh, Judy's going to be so upset. I'm calling her from, I didn't have a cell phone back then. I was borrowing someone's cell phone to call Judy. And then I, and over the phone, like the third phone call, Judy said, well, I have been living with her for a long time. So I know what she's like, you know, so, <laughs> but it, it was just true that, but that one was a real disaster. So I even would learn how not to encourage her if she thought about the dollar store or wanted to go to it. I would have to figure out how that just couldn't happen. Catherine, tell the story today. Can you tell the story about the time you took her to the movie, The War Horse? Yeah, I was thinking about that when you were talking something about, uh, you were about taking her to a movie. It was a disaster. She, she was in there and we're watching it as all those battles and the horse and the bloodshed. And she said, she said, this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Who's responsible for this? Who did this? I said, Steven Spielberg. She goes, this is the wrong message. This is terrible. How did we end up here in the first place? And I said, uh, I said, well, it was recommended by Tina. Tina, I hope you're hearing this. And she said, who is she? She's the, I said, she's an actress and she knew that this was one of a lot of awards. And Adele said, she's cracked. She's gotta be cracked. And then she didn't want to stay and her hand kept going up like this. And we, would, we were up and it was so dark and in the theater. So we we're trying to get off to the left and we had to go over some guy's leg and you know, we're kind of, excuse me, excuse me. And then unfortunately, I don't think I saw any better than Adele, we hit a wall. So it meant we couldn't get out that way. So we had to turn back and Adele is hitting this. She goes, what is that? I go, that's that man's leg again. You know, we're going, excuse me, excuse me. And her hand is going up. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. Then we get into, we're out of the, that theater and she starts looking and she's, you know, there are other movies going on. And she said, well, maybe we can go to that one. This would be another case that if I hadn't said no, we'd still be in the theater. You know, <laughs> he was wonderful. <laughs> did she but was there there must have been a movie that you'd taken her to that she actually liked this one she was she didn't like she said it would be misunderstood that it was not going to be a message of peace that it was going to be misunderstood and she was so uh emotional about that she Catherine, Catherine I went to the movies with her in California and it was a, a comedy about a bank robber. And she burst out in the middle of the movie and she said, this is wrong, flailing <laughs> her arms. This is wrong, stealing's wrong. And I said, oh, okay, Adele, okay, <laughs> okay we, had to, we had to leave. Yeah, but I, I liked that in a sense. I thought, you know, she's passionate. She felt it was wrong. I mean, why sit there like, maybe it's right. You know, she was like, woo. Huh? Yeah. She took me to one movie that later on won the Oscar. 
and the movie called Life is Beautiful. It was that Italian movie oh, that yeah. the actor played, uh, you know, going to a concentration camp and coming out and so forth. Uh, it was very lovely. One time, I, now I, I remember she took me to that movie. Mm. Did she like uh, it? Did oh, she, she did definitely like it. It was her recommendation uh, that I see it. And it was really, it, it really lifted me up. I, I, I just thought, oh, there is a hope in life because then there's a, there's a, I at least watched that movie on DVD three, four times more <laughs> later because it gives me, gave me a lot of hope that despite of all your hardship and difficulties, you can still be happy and take care of your family. That's what the movie is all about, that movie. Life is beautiful, yeah. Thanks, Mahmoud. Thank Ms. You. Catherine Cox, do you still have something else you want to share with us? No, let's see, um, am I muted? No, oh, you're, yeah. you're no, I'm not muted. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of is one of the things I saw about Adele was she really didn't show her age. She was young. She was very current with things. You know, if it, it wasn't even just about the news and, you know, uh, this or that, but you, I never got a sense of her being old and, and her mind would get contracted or something. No, she was so wanting something new and fresh. And as you know, Judy had pointed out, I mean, she wanted to be a part of things. If something was going on, what's happening at the center? What's happening in town? She wanted to be, uh, whether it was political or just going places. She stayed very fresh and young. Yeah, thanks. That's kind of how I, I sensed her and saw her, right? That was at the center. So it was when, you know, a little more advanced time, but it never felt that when you stood next to her she always felt just something there that was so young thank yeah, you and, and you know how uh some people aren't good listeners she was a listener she was going to focus in and she was definitely going to hear what you were saying and what was behind what you were saying you know she had that quality yeah thanks so sweet we need that. Poppy? Yeah, um, on the topic of, of her being youthful and young, um, I was, a, is it really true? I thought I heard that she actually moved here when she was 90 to Myrtle Beach. Because I, to, when I think the fact of knowing her, you know, these those few years and thinking she was in her 90s, maybe I didn't quite you know, I, could, I wasn't thinking of her in her 90s, but that amazes me. I, and she's so active. And um, I worked in the, as I was working in the North Myrtle Beach Library for many years, and um, she would come in and, and go, go to some of the programs, all different types of programs, she'd be there. So, you know, like to, um, but one, one great memory was, I think was, a few years after that, there was this big party for her, for a birthday party. And I remember her, she was up there dancing, you know, rock, you know, to rock music. She was out there dancing with everybody else. So I thought that was very cool. Yeah, that is cool. All right. Rosalie, go ahead. She was physically strong, and uh, she, she ate well. She, you know, and it was funny. She used to try to bring health food to Phyllis, and Phyllis didn't want didn't want it. You know, they just had different points of view about eating. Just, and uh, also, uh, I would drive Phyllis Frederick. I had a little VW Bug. I drive her to the Baba meeting and uh, Adele wanted to come with us. And I went, no, Adele, you don't, you two don't get along. I, I don't, I, 
it's hard for me to be in the car driving when you're you're arguing that you know they and it was funny because Phyllis said they had lives where they were married <laughs> and I believe it because it was like whoa and and also uh, Phyllis would not ride with Adele because of her driving but I thought that was kind of interesting too because uh, Phyllis was very psychic you know, and Adele never had an accident. You know, she she must have been surrounded by angels. And at the end, uh, before I left LA, I was I was caretaker at the Baba Center, and uh, um, oh, and I was. Someone calls me and they says Adele needs to stop driving. Rosalie, we we thought you could talk to her about it. And I thought, oh my God. And so uh, I remember trying to address that maybe she could stop driving now. And she says, I'm a good driver. I don't drive in the snow. I don't drive in this. I mean, she went off on this tangent and, but she, she did stop driving and, you know, but she was, she was, she was a scary driver, you know. She, that she can be totally focused on Baba and Spacey at the same time. She wasn't Spacey about Baba. No. But about functioning differently. Yeah. No, she was, uh, uh, she was a feisty individual. <laughs> and I, I remember one time, uh, there were a lot of uh, Persians there, and I don't know. I she made me mad, and I was saying, "Adele, you make me mad about this." And and they go, "Ooh, don't talk to Adele like that." I said, "You stay out of it. This is between Adele and me." <laughs> so we we had a, a feisty relationship, and uh, I'm grateful for it. It was it was a learning experience, and um, um, yeah, both ways. I certainly learned. You know, she was not a, a a stagnant person at all. You know, she was, uh, and and that service that that tendency to service. You know, the few times I I'd be at her house and the. The phone would ring, and I thought it is all over. She was Miss Service, and uh, I don't remember the meal continue because it was a string of calls, and she was just so willing to serve, and she was she was willing to reach out to people that were kind of fringe per people, you know, not run of the. Yeah, and that I, I admired that in her. You know, she was like um, between her Baba and the other person. You know, there was, uh, and uh, and also her, her wonderful feelings. She had this rose garden on the coast highway, and she had named the roses. There was a Mara rose. It was a Mon she loved the women Mondelian, and of course had spent those wonderful times with Baba and the women Mondali in the guest house. They'd meet and, you know, I, I was just reading about it the other day and I thought, what a glorious time she had with Baba. And yet that, I say utter humility about meeting him and all that time. And, you know, she just, it just didn't cross her mind. She she knew she was fortunate, but not like uh, nothing better than thou or, you know, not a trace of it. You know, it was, uh, she was just one of the soul hounds going after Baba, you know. It was, um, she was just so human. I love that. She was human. And well, that's beautiful, Rosalie. You have one. I mean, like an honest spirituality. Yes. You know, it was, uh, yeah, quite, uh, quite.
quite remarkable. We had her play Baba John in a play it because Baba said she had eyes like Baba John. And Phyllis Frederick admitted that she felt this spark of jealousy that Baba said that and and Adele, and Phyllis is right there. And then Baba looked at Phyllis and you know it was anyway. And then she she um uh, uh, Phyllis was so established with she was like the mother of the LA Baba lovers. And then Adele comes driving with the police escort. And you know, it, it was a big deal to get into the group in a way, because Phyllis was so, uh, really she, I would say the mother of the group, if you could say such a thing. A lot, we had a lot of years with her and she, she met with every hippie, probably in the United States and there were a lot of ex-hippies in, in her fold, you know, and, uh, and Adele was absolutely not a public speaker. Absolutely. So when Jeff came on the scene and was able to draw out, I mean, she had this precious, she massaged Baba's feet one time. I mean, these precious, precious things. But she bring all the papers that was all over when Jeff got the idea and it worked like a charm, you know. It was funny, at times I used to give her body work and I loved giving Adele body work. I mean, she'd be laying there like a little bird it was in her later years. And she was so compliant. She'd fall asleep when I was giving her body work. And uh, we got along great when I gave her body work. <laughs> Some people are picky, she was like. And one other thing, you could wake her up from sleep and she was in a good mood. You know, she would, that's remarkable. Both, both she and uh, Phyllis had that about them. It's, it really shows really good things about you that you can wake up and be in a good mood. <laughs> anyway. What I want to know, Rosalie, is what happened to that dinner? <laughs> I never ate it. I mean, the dinner ended up and she apologized to me. Uh, uh, she was waiting for Paul, a Baba lover, Paul Hartuni was going to bring, he worked at a, a hotel and he was going to bring all this delicious seafood. And I never knew. I mean, I, um, I got a ride home, you know, and... Uh, I was happy about that, you know. I, so yeah. did the dinner actually happen? Because you said there were six people. Judy, do you know? Oh, no, yeah, there were probably more than six people. I mean, they she kept, the phone calls kept coming and she wouldn't say no. She'd say, come on over, we're having dinner. So I never knew what happened, but I almost, I considered it the Mad Hatter's tea party for me. You know, I had to... <laughs> <laughs> I had to uh, come another time. You know? And also I got a, a, you know, she was small in stature, but you know, she was like a, she was a spitfire. You know, you could feel that almost, almost military like force. And uh, yeah, so, uh, um, but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, she used that when she went and met my mother. I mean, my, my mother was picked up on her spiritual side. You know, she just, um, I've never seen my mother act that way, just totally out of character. Yeah. So, uh, and for Adele, it was just another day, you know. I mean, it was a great favor. I mean, I knew as my nose was touching my plate because I thought my mother was going to blow up and no, uh, she took it in somehow. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, I think my mother was really afraid of her. 
because she knew that she knew Phyllis Frederick. She had never met Phyllis, only on the phone. But it was the Baba connection. They were all like, you know, Rose has gone off, you know. <laughs> you know. After all that Catholic training, I went the lost sheep, you know. But uh, yeah, my karma, what can I say? But just definitely a great, it's, it's a great karma with Baba because it's so devotional, you know? I mean, this, and, and now I have God's hair, <laughs> his real hair. I don't have something touched, just touch the touch. You know, it's like, uh, uh, speak of Christmas, you know? You know, now, you know, actually, for anyone that doesn't know, Catholic means universal. And I thought, Baba really made me universal because to find out that he comes again and again and again, he was Zoroaster, Ramakrishna, Buddha. I mean, I was in seventh heaven when I heard that, when it it hit me that that was how it was. Wow. So then when you write a Christmas card, it's like, wow, he's really taking form. You know, this is fabulous. You know, it's not like a Christmas card. You know, it's like, whoa, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Baba really brings he brings it into form again. I mean, it's undeniable. And because uh, this is such a great advent, uh, I mean, we haven't even begun to see the changes that are going to, you know, just, you know, we're going towards intuition. Yeah, we're not all that intuitive. It's something you have to um, almost practice you know, and see if you, you're right on some things, you know. Yeah. But it'll make life a lot easier, you know. And it's each one's personal intuition. That's what I love about Baba speaking through Norena. Um, he said, this is really not to be disputed in the mind. If you must dispute it, dispute it in the heart. You know. Thanks. I mean, he says, don't dispute it. It's not, it's unworthy. It's not worth, it's, it's wrong to dispute it in the mind. It's not a mental thing, these transmissions, you know. Anyway, uh, I think I drank tea too late in the day. I'm a little charged up on caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> but still Adele, you know, I, yeah. I feel celebration, you know, I mean, uh, yes. uh, she was such a dynamic person that when I think of all the different things that I went through with her, you know, really, all of these people, it's not, oh, you know, it's not all one way. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, that's how life is. It's not all one way. Yeah. Thanks, Rosalie. You're so right, honey. Thank you so much for everything you said. Beautiful. Well, it was a gift to me because I, I can't believe when I started a loop and, you know, putting things down, I thought, wow. And then I remember the movie. I had to get out of the movie. And I, I have to say, I would say, when Adele ticked me off, I would say, oh, Baba, but Phyllis was so easy. And she was. Uh, she was an easier personality for, for me, but uh, that was vital to see that other side for me, to see the other side of me, you know. And, uh, and Adele could be incredibly intuitive, you know, like, you know. And, uh, and she could be incredibly off it, you know. <laughs> like, like trying to deny me my last time to see me. <laughs> it's like Baba's joke that 
he didn't let me find that out until Adele was gone. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny, you know, because I thought, hmm, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Rosalie. Okay, Betty, you go ahead. Uh, just real How quickly, just real quickly, um, it's funny, Bobby and I must have had the same flash. I, I flashed back to that. It's a video of Adele, and I think it was a 90-something birthday. And there was this conga line going, dancing, and there was Adele running up to join. Just uh, It's a wonderful visual image of that lively lady. She had such a good time at her party. That's all. It's in the archives somewhere. It's great. So, Jay Baba. Jay Baba, Betty. Thank you. And Mahu? Sorry, I, I'm going to take care of my camera soon. Um, I think uh, it, I feel like I uh, it's a good idea to talk about uh, Phyllis and Adele's role in regard to LA group, um, which I, I have you know dedicated my life to many years to Baba's Grace. I. Uh, Adele and uh, uh, I did not uh, meet uh, Phyllis in person, but immediately after I came to Baba through uh, videos and so forth and her talks, I was attracted to her. Uh, but the role was very different. Uh, Baba called them Philadel. That means one to one working for him. And, uh, but they, they were very different in personality, uh, demeanor, uh, character, and so forth. As I gather from, well, uh, uh, Phyllis uh, created a listener. I mean, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the bylaws and all the documents, Phyllis plus six other people who were four are no longer in LA, they, they created the LA Center. And uh, her Western culture and her being psychic and very easygoing and laughing and calmness was very attractive to many people. Um, because I, I mean, I talked to LA people, I was before much more. And I can see uh, she, had many, uh, Phyllis had many um, fans, so to speak, quote unquote, or people that really adore her and so forth because they could relate to her. She would say what is who they were in their past lives and whatnot, and she was living in Hermosa Beach and, you know, and, and she played her role as amazing, brilliant woman. I mean, just look at the Awakener magazine. I can't believe that mine. And, but Adele was, was very different. Um, Adele was uh, much more connected to the Eastern people like us, Iranian people, Persians. And of course, LA has a big group of, had a, a largest group of Persian Baba lovers. And when you talk to her and she would say, yeah, because my parents are from Ukraine. Her parents was from Ukraine. So, she did have some Eastern background in her karma or sanskaras. Um, but, you know, uh, oftentimes I, I myself explained it to a few that why did we adore, adore Adele to that level and ignored some of her uh, whatever weaknesses or um, harsh nature or whatnot for two reasons. One was, I don't know, I mean, I think we're very devotional to Baba. And if a person have met Baba and served him to that level, no question asked. I mean, it's just for us is a big blessing. It's his blessing for, uh, you know, someone like Adele to be at our midst and be in touch with us in day to day life and help us out to know how Baba would see things through this. And uh, so for us, it was like every minute of it was precious. Every minute of it was, oh, Adele, okay. Well, so what next, Adele? What next? What next? And <laughs> she would laugh and would go through all this explanation and so forth. 
Second thing is, I, I was explaining to Lois one day and, and so forth, is we, by culture, uh, we have a great admiration and respect for elderly people. So if people are older, they immediately earn our respect. We, we want to know what to do for them. And if they earn terror, we get up and offer our seat to them and you know what not and, and try to cook them food, take care of them, nature, nurture them and so forth. And we did with Adele with all the sweetness. Uh, so perhaps uh, my relationship with her or how I see it or exchange is might be a little bit different because you know, with me, she could have been a little bit sour and minute later was gone. It was gone, you know, because her sweetness would take over and I wouldn't even remember. What did she say? What did she tell me? You know, so I think their role was quite different, Phyllis and Adele, although they had great, great role in LA Center and where LA Center is and who I am. I mean, I ended up being president for many years and stuff. I owe it to Adele and Bao Kalchuri, of course, and you know, Baba's Mandeli, but they helped us being trained and 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 you know just uh, firm our faith on beloved and dedicate our life to, to beloved Baba because we see them living their life just for Baba. I mean, nobody, I mean, I would go to a restaurant for her and the packet of all the photos will be there and she will lay it on, <laughs> on the table and the Chinese guy would say, Adele, I've seen this before, this before, this before, but I haven't seen this before. So that was how she was working at that level. Anyway, I, I shouldn't be talking my three bubble. I think you're wonderful. Thank you, Mahu and everyone. Judy, is there anything else here that you'd like to bring or are you? You have to unmute, sweetheart. Okay, I, I just wanted to add on to a story of Betty Loman. Is Betty still there? No, maybe not. No anyway, name. she was telling how Adele worked with the children. And the story she was talking about was, um, there's a book called The Tree Grows in Brooklyn about um, this um, settlement um, house where they were, you know, helping the children. And that Adele actually worked there, which was pretty amazing. And she was, at, Baba was still alive. She sent pictures of all the children to Baba. And Baba pointed out several children to her to give special attention to. And she did. She was very sweet about it. She even had Darwin Shaw take this little girl for a weekend. And, you know, eventually they did lose track of the, the two children. But, um, I'm sure, you know, Baba was his instrument in doing that particular work. She also, we never mentioned Sheila Kerensky, which was really important because she brought Sheila Kerensky. They both went to um, a class about uh, how to be a teacher. They both were going to become teachers. And um, that's how Sheila met Adele because there was Adele and she, she was like, um, had a poster of Baba or something, and next thing you know, she was very involved in printing things for Baba. So that was a really nice connection, and Adele liked to go over and visit uh, Sheila, you know, when she was uh, here from India a couple of times a year. She had kept that connection all her life. She loved Sheila. We didn't mention that. But that was very important because uh, Sheila's publishing thing really reached a lot of people, all her published work. And, they would make posters. Sheila would make all these posters, and Adele would go and put them up <laughs> on the telephone poles. So she did such so much work for Baba. It's really amazing when you think about her life and everything she did for Baba. It's really amazing. I I thought it was a really good meeting. I really liked hearing from Mahu and, and Rosalie and everybody. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. and Catherine, yeah. All the people really so had such good stories. Yeah. I know when Mahu would talk to Adele, it was so sweet. I love watching Adele talking to Mahu because Mahu would just be so focused and so attentive and so 
sweet with the Dell. You had a very sweet way with her, Mahu. So anyway, thank you for all the stories for everyone. Thank you, Judy. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, let's just have a moment of silence and then we can do a key J. Jay Baba, okay. if you'd like to unmute, we oh. can all say Avatar Mayor Baba Kiche. Avatar Mayor Baba Kiche. Avatar Mayor Baba Kiche. Avatar Mayor Baba Kiche. Jay Baba, everyone. Thanks for Thank you, Ruth. You did a wonderful job. It was wonderful. Thank you all the people that were very close to Adele who gave such beautiful uh, stories and thank you all and thank you Adele and thank you Baba. Ruth, can I talk to you now? Um, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I have this Christmas carol with different animals, the friendly beast, do you know it? I don't. I I want you to sing one of the animals. You have to make animal sounds. <laughs> what, what animal sounds do I need to make? Well, it depends on if you want to be the cow, the donkey, or the sheep, mm. <laughs> or, the, or, or the dove. Or the dove. Dove mm. has to have a high voice. Do no. you have a high voice? Not anymore. Oh. I used to sing. What about the, the sheep? He could sing, uh, she could sing Baba. I know. I was thinking that too, but I hate to take that because maybe somebody else will want it. Be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to Baba. That's what Kitty told me one time. When it comes to Baba, you can be greedy. Uh, yeah, I'm going to send you the YouTube of it. Okay. Sounds uh, it's a, it's a delightful song. It's yeah. so are you going to sing it now, Tina? Uh, okay, I'll give you a preview. All right. Um, I'll see. Um, I'm not sure I remember all the words, but Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born in a stable rude, and the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, kind and good. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I carried his mother up hill and down. I carried her safely to Bethlehem town. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. Eel, eel, eel. I said the cow, all white and red. I gave him my stable for his bed. I gave her my hay to lay down his he her head. I said the cow all white and red, moo. I said the sheep with the curly horn. I gave him my coat. On Christmas morn, I gave him my wool to keep him warm. I said the sheep with the curly horn. Ah, ah. I said the dove all white. I said the dove from the rafters high. I cooed him to sleep, my mate and I. We cooed him to sleep that he should not cry. I said the dove from the rafters high. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. And then there's the last verse. So the friendly beast in each good spell. In a stable root was born to tell of the gift they gave Emmanuel. The gift they gave Emmanuel. That's approximately it.
Sounds great. I'll be happy to be the sheep. You can be the sheep. I like I like the black ass too, I have to say. I like you like the, the donkey? You want to be the <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Okay, we'll see y'all in a few minutes for the uh, play. I know. I've got to have some lunch. Yeah, I had some lunch while you were doing this. Nice. What did you have? Um, I had a rice cake with uh, turkey and uh, Swiss cheese and avocado. Ooh, that sounds so good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm on 12% battery, so I might have to shut down for a while. You better plug in, baby. Yeah, I'm plugging in right now. I am looking for other people to sing my Christmas song and the pageant on Christmas Day. Is that that you mean that song? That animal? Yeah, that song. I'll help. You I wonder if your husband you, wants a part. Who do you want to be, Elizabeth? I could do the dove because my voice is kind of my high. husband wants to do the jackass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um so um let me look for the link and i'm going to put it in the chat hold on a minute all right uh, see we're all chatters you know we're used to chatting a lot of people who, who come to different meetings they just haven't had that opportunity to do the chat well what you, you have to be able to keep chat? the melody that's all yeah we're we do it a lot so it's easy for us yeah I'm sorry, okay. what do you mean by do the chat? You mean talk in the chat while we're doing the live stream? No, I'm, no, I'm going to put the link to the recording of the song so you can yeah, practice it. Oh, whoa, 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 see, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that was great. Thank you. That was just so wonderful. I never get a chance to share my stories, you know? Well, what were they? Well, they were... <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. I I just uh, opened it up. I'm going to put it in the chat. Thank you, dear. Kind of like yours, Elizabeth, only I didn't go over to see her, but every now and then either she would sidle up next to me or I would sidle up next to her. And then we would talk about being nurses. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that. When she said she was a nurse, I thought about your role as, as my nurse, actually, <laughs> at a very important, critical time. Wow. Well, you know, it is. It's such an amazing thing. It's, it's a real blessing to be a nurse and have opportunities for service. So, oops. Well, I guess I brought it up. Okay, I'm trying to copy it. I I put the the link in the chat. There's the copy. I think I no, it's not. Oh, I was doing it at the same time. Sorry, that's probably why it didn't work. Try uh -oh. it again. Let me try this again. Select all. Oh no, I don't want all. No, I've just got. I'm my thing is all messed up but anyway yeah well look at it on uh youtube it's the friendly beast no i oh okay you can ruthie it. i'll send it to you because I, I think i've got it i've got i'll send you a copy okay i can get it right here okay yeah i did it again whoa, whoa. all right so um anyway thank you everyone thank, Rosalie, you. thank you so much for your shares I have to do some exercises now, so I'm going to mute you. So many beautiful things, Rosalie. Thank you. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the person who has a lot to offer, and I think that certainly was Adele. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that didn't work. Okay. I'll it. Ruthie, I just sent it to you in case you're, you're yeah. coming in an email. Yeah. On, to, on your Roadrunner account, though. Yeah, Maybe that's the one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, dear. I just did the first one that came up. Right. <laughs> so was there anything else with you and Adele? Well, it was that always that constant 
thing about come and see her and then I didn't. And I forget who, if it, I don't remember who it was. I want to say it was Daryl Smith or my friend John Oat. There was someone who always encouraged me to go and see her. Go and see her. And I just missed my opportunity. Maybe it was Jeff Weberton. No, I don't think so. But I'm so happy to hear your story because it's like the continuation of my story of having that opportunity with her at the at the meeting place uh -huh. and you followed through and, yeah. and it's just beautiful what an amazing um experience you had because you followed through yeah well yeah. you know it was my interest in norena and yeah. what i told her about my family yes made her yeah. ask her to come. so anyway 